everyone, I'm Carol. Um, I'm going to share a video with you today on conversations with Gaia. Now, Gaia was a name given to the spirit of the earth back in the 60s. And it's a name that embodies the essence of Mother Earth. It's a name that was given to describe, if you like, the spiritual essence of Mother Earth of our planet, of our gorgeous, gorgeous planet. And it often refers to the feminine, to the mother, to the nurturing, to the cherishing part of our planet. And um, many of us that have intuitive insight are tapping into the many different vibrational essences that exist in this world. And majoritively, it's a really, really fabulous idea to really get in contact with your intuitive self and your core self and the part of you that's actually attached to the divine and the divine's language. And the language of the soul um, is often in whispers, it's often quiet, it's often little nudges. And then sometimes it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. <laughs> especially when it's working with the body, you know, it's nice to listen to the gentle nudges of what the body needs, as the body always tells the truth, um, and react to that first rather than let it get stronger and give us a big slap to get our attention. Um, it's the same really with intuitive, um, intuitive connections, because if we listen to the whispers, if we listen to the quiet, gentle voices inside our mind and heart, and we actually take heed and actually take action on those things, then it gets stronger and stronger and stronger so that the voice inside really appears to be louder, but it's not really louder, it's just that our attention is upon it. We value it more and we start to live by it. So. Over the years, I've made all the mistakes that you can imagine in, in, in developing my intuition. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm coming from a point where I've completely ignored my intuition. I didn't know what my intuition was, all the many and wonderful things us humans go through. Um, so that's why I can talk now of it being of such high value because I think some of you sharing this video, sharing this space with me today, will totally get it when I'm talking about if we ignore our intuition, if you ignore that gut feel, I usually end up a bit of a cropper. So <laughs> it's really nice to actually follow it and uh, take action upon it. So over time, um, my intuitive abilities have increased because the more I focus on it, the more I get. And I practice with it. I, I'm fortunate, fortunate enough to um, sort of hold lots of gatherings and uh, facilitate um, healing sessions and sort of a facilitator of change into an empowered state. And to do that, one must live it first. So I'm always... Uh, wanting to be the authentic person in the, in the sense that, you know, what I'm suggesting or teaching, I've usually experienced the majority of it myself in some way, shape or form. So it's coming from a real um, experienced state. So what actually happens with your intuition is every single person on this planet has a unique signature that should be celebrated. There's nothing wrong with us. It's just that's who we are. And society sometimes takes a little bit longer than at other times to actually get used to people who are different. Um, I believe everybody is completely different from each other. We all have differences that need to be celebrated in some way, shape or form. Um, and uh, when we bring a group of people together or a group of energies together and work as a team, those unique signatures can produce the most amazing harmony. And um, my Enchanted Lands series and Heavenly series and 
Cosmic Awakening series and all of those gatherings are all about that. They're celebrating you in your uniqueness and you're giving and receiving with Mother Earth in some way, shape or form. And across many different time frames. Um, but I, I won't hold you up on that one today because you'll have me here forever on that. <laughs> so today I just wanted to talk to you really about the fact that uh, for me, for my unique signature that I'm offering to you is, is I have an ability to actually uh, listen. I, I like chatting, so listening to many different light beings and um, getting quite a lot of cosmic information for us on a global scale so we can actually put our own unique journey into perspective because perspective gives you the time to breathe and go calm and go inward. It gives us a time to... Uh, consider things before we react gives us a time to adapt and that's extremely important in our time of remembering and awakening and ascension on this planet so Gaia has been giving me information about her needs and her evolution over a long period of time now and you know, if you're sitting there watching this video thinking, Carol, what are you talking about? You're talking to Mother Earth. Um, do you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what, um, you know, who it is I'm talking to or what what belief structures are around um, angels or fairies or the land or the ley lines or other people's minds or anything else really what's really important is what i feel is is okay to um commune with and to pass messages through and in the same way i offer you that encouragement to get really really confident in your own ability as to what sort of nudges are you getting getting and where's it coming from you know if you can focus on it being from your higher mind from your higher self that's your direct telephone conversation with the divine with the great spirit with the god with the goddess which whatever your belief structure is and if you don't have any of those in your belief structure use the word love you know, it's your connection with love, with a with a force that is so dynamic and so creative. It's magical and it can do anything. So that's my idea of the divine anyway. So um, by developing your own intuitive self and your connection with the divine, I don't know, life, you know, I know poop still happens and chaos is still there and all the rest of it, but somehow you get qualities that enable you to react to that in a different way it enables you to stay in the love zone and to accommodate all of those all of those choices that the world is appearing to make and focus on what's really happening inside and bring your attention back to the love back to the divine that you are back to the original spark of light that you are um, embodying this this human form for a very short period of time in the soul's existence. So Mother Earth I connect into now and again and it's really really helped. Lots of people have asked me to do a video on this because they say having that perspective really helps sometimes when they think they're going a bit loop-de-loop -loop and thinking oh, going on and getting overwhelmed with life in general but there's no particular reason about why they can sort of think they need to get overwhelmed it's sort of like why am I getting over so looking at the bigger picture sometimes helps with that so this year for the whole of 2019 Guy has actually said to me that she is deeply um, enmeshed and offering freedom and she's also focusing on depth. So she's offering freedom and depth together. So, um, you know, what this generally does, whenever she gives me the heads up on this, which she does around the end of December each year, when I, when I connect in, she's sort of giving an overall, as it were, like an overall view. And it means that um, often, if we've got anything in the opposite of that, then those challenges will be coming up. So we get like a heads up 
to make things not as drama um, enticing as it would otherwise be. So for freedom, so obviously this came through in December. I'm sharing this with you now at the beginning of April. So we've had time to really look at what the influence of that is. And it has it has really dug up some some of the opposites of freedom for people. So just for a moment, will you think what is the opposite of freedom for me? Just shut your eyes for a minute and go in and, and ask inside from your heart. What's the opposite of freedom for me? And then take whichever the first answer is. Intuition works in this way, it doesn't mess about. It gives you the first real answer straight away. Your mind then comes in often to check that out, make sure it's okay, alter it, argue with it. <laughs> Just take the first answer that came in. So whatever your answer is, and some people have, have talked to me about, you know, they've been struggling the first quarter this year with, um, some of their shadow side that's helped them, that's made them feel kind of like locked in or, or shackled or um, imprisoned um, or stuck, really, really, really stuck. So those are the sort of types of things that uh, people have been working with recently. So we're looking at changing those into freedom, into a sensation and feeling and knowledge of freedom. So um, one of the games of, of uh, change that I've offered, and it's a previous video, so look it up if you think it's of use, we use it regularly, is uh, called Game of Opposites. Try that one because you can say, sometimes I feel free and sometimes I feel shackled and I'm okay with that. It neutralizes the, um, the, the sensation, the thoughts, the emotions that are actually lowering your vibrational essence and if your vibrational essence is really low it's more painful it's just slower it's sludgier and it's more painful the higher the vibration the higher the attachment to the love to the fun to the hope to the joy to the belief um in love that there is the higher the vibration the easier it sometimes gets <laughs> because oh, some of that stuff just doesn't matter. We don't sweat the small stuff. We're focusing on the big stuff, which enables the small stuff um, to be there, but not to engage into the drama level. So watch out for that one for the rest of this year. Um, it's also, you know, Mother Earth's inviting us to go very deep with all of our um, joy and our experiences this year. So. Um, you know, some people get to a point where they're wanting to change things in life, but their their story is the same and the same. And and some people say to me, you know, oh God, it's the it's the same story. It's just a different day. You know, that's given you it's given you that. Don't beat yourself up for that. I mean, that's been there for a reason for some reason or other. You'll have been getting a positive byproduct of that, but. If you're acknowledging that that's true, ah, celebrate that because the moment you actually start to say things like that means it's the moment you have choice. You consciously have brought that into your existence to make a different choice. <laughs> that's freedom. That's coming out of the doldrums into, actually, I wanna be free of this story and change it to another. And guess what? As the master of your own mind, you get to do that. You can do that. I believe in you. You can do it. So have a go with all the many tools that are around these days to assist us in this. The other thing she was talking about, which I found quite interesting as well to have this coming in at the same time is we're in a time where unity is available you know this heaven on earth stuff is available now it's a united field that's there and we are when people talk about awakening and remembering it's to do with the fact that it's there it's not something to be attained and we're to live it now so it's making the choices to start to live it now and um in in any little moment or big moment that you possibly can and Earth Mother also gave us like an infinity symbol sign. And she gave me receiving and giving in equal measure. And then what she did with the infinity sign is to take it and then bring it together and then do this. 
So it's sort of the yin and the yang symbol, as it were, and bringing it together in unity. So giving and receiving in equal measure and living in each other's hearts with that. So um, many people who might access this video, uh, maybe light beings, maybe people who are on the spiritual path, maybe people who have an inquiry into the bigger questions about what's life all about, what's my purpose and how do I live that? And, uh, you know, I think I'm going a bit nuts what's happening. <laughs> and that's often to do with the fact that you're waking up to being a light worker and uh, a peaceful warrior and um, also, also trying to get to grips often with empathy. And so this giving and receiving is quite a thing because many people who are born of that signature um, end up being slaves, you know, end up being slaves, not of service, but slavery comes into it, where you, you're sort of giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. And giving. <laughs> it's not quite in balance. And I think the, the trick to this is to swap from slavery into service, which is empowering and a choice thing to go do your thing, is, is basically to acknowledge, um, you know, it's resentment. It, your, your ticket to freedom into, into service rather than slavery is resentment. Resentment is your friend here because if you start resenting giving in any way, shape or form, and everybody knows what that feels like, then it's akin to you being a slave and doing it against your will. <laughs> and kicking and screaming. Whereas if you don't have resentment, you have joy, it becomes a service. So watch out for that one. Um, so choose to be in service to your life, your love, your joy, commitment to that. And of course, if you're in that zone, everyone else gets a better existence because your aura will be full of all of those joy points and that kind of infects everybody else that's around you, which is amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just just great, just fun. It, it's it's a choice thing again. It's like you know, what are you, what are you going to invest in today? Are we going to invest in the the slavery voice? Are we going to invest in the service voice? So that's one step into the light, and another one is uh, and into the joy and into the love that you are. And the other one really is to just step it up a little bit more and know that you're in service. And so therefore service is equally giving and receiving because if you're not receiving enough silent time for yourself, if you're not receiving enough blessed, good, organic um, Mother Earth produce to uh, help this frame, if you're not receiving enough water, if you're not receiving enough friendship, if you're not receiving enough connection with Mother Earth, if you're not receiving things, then it's a little bit hard to keep the giving going without going into the resentment. So it's really nice to actually have, make sure that you put in your diary of life, receiving first, because the giving is, is going to be filled up and can be filled up 10 times. So put it in there so it gives you a nice balance so you stay in for the long term so that you um, enjoy every moment of what you're doing in your in your light worker or service life okay so um that's just a few tips that might help uh, but yeah just keep an eye on that for this year the freedom side and the depth side and the giving and receiving because if you bundle that together that's quite a lot for us to <laughs> Um, uh, work through this year and so she's enabling us by letting us know what her earth energies are adjusting to and therefore those are the vibrations that are there for us to easily access this is the thing when the opposite of those things come up because the earth mother's in that frame in that zone at the moment we can access it really easily so we can make a shift from feeling less than, to more than, to feeling free, very much easier than we could do years ago because her vibrations are in that zone. So it's much easier than it used to be. And the only way of finding that out is for you to practice it for yourself 
and I wish you well and lots of love in your own practice of loving you. Thank you for listening. Cell to cell. Bye for now. Mm-hmm. <laughs>